Meanwhile, the U.S. got a message from Russia about its recent demands. A lot of back and forth about these demands. But now, Russia's saying, oh, there was a goof. This is all very odd. Sergei Lavrov, the foreign minister there, said last night's message was on a specific topic, not the back and forth on demands. It was sent to several countries. Lavrov spoke to Secretary of State Antony Blinken earlier today. Blinken made clear the U.S. is still willing to talk. And the White House echoed that sentiment today. The door to diplomacy remains open. Uh, we don't know uh, what decision President Putin will make. Let's try to sort some of this out and get a little more specific, maybe. John Hardy joins us, research analyst specializing in Russia for the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. John, Russia has the troops in place, equipment ready, blood on standby. Do you believe he's really still making up his mind in Moscow? I do. I, I think Putin is trying to leave himself options. Um, I think that's kind of the way he operates, is he likes to have lots of options and be able to sort of make tactical adjustments and, and kind of keep his opponents guessing and feel out the situation as he goes. So I, I fully expect that he, while he is probably prepared to use force, he may have not made the final decision to do so. Really, like he go to all the trouble of compiling and moving and storing blood? near the near the border just for, to make a point? Well, not just to make a point, but I mean, the, the best case scenario from his perspective would be to, uh, you know, for Washington and Western allies to accede to Russia's demands about, you know, NATO uh, enlargement, things like that. So, um, and then not to use force from Russia's perspective. If you can get your win without all the costs of, of invasion, that'd be the ideal. And so to make, you know, this threat credible, you do, of course, need to, move in all the supporting elements. Um, uh, that being said, I, I do believe that if Putin does not get his way, which it looks like he will not, uh, he is prepared to use force. John, I would love tonight if we can clear something up that seems to be at the heart of this right now. Russia says NATO encroached far past the agreed upon boundaries. NATO says, no, that's just not true. So I went looking, I looked in the National Security Archive at GW, uh, right here in town, and there's this, it says in part, quote, the documents, which were declassified, show that multiple national leaders were considering and rejecting Central and Eastern European membership in NATO as of early 1990 and through 1991. And it continues. And that subsequent Soviet and Russian complaints about being misled about NATO expansion were founded in written contemporaneous memcons and telcons at the highest levels. I think the really famous quote from Jim Baker at the time was, not one inch eastward. Is Russia right? Well, I'd say overall their narrative is is incorrect. I think they are they do have a point in the sense that um, you know they were given certain ver verbal assurances, were allowed to believe certain things uh, in the waning days of the Soviet Union. Um, that being said, later on, I think uh, the, the nascent Russian Federation did knowingly acquiesce um, to to enlargement, knowing that. They did move forward knowing that, you know, enlargement would happen uh, for various reasons, uh, needing financial assistance, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the, the NATO uh, Russia uh, Founding Act, for example, you know, makes no such commitment. So the, the U.S. never gave it in writing. There were certain you know, verbal uh, verbal understandings. Did they have a choice then? I mean, you, you talk about how you know they kind of acquiesced. <laughs> If something wasn't in writing, I know, but if you're in a weakened state, uh, geographically, financially, but you still said, you promised me this. Uh, I mean, did they really agree to that? Yeah, well, I, that, that is one reason why, you know, uh, Putin has this um, sort of narrative of grievance. I, I would say that, um, you know, things get said a lot in diplomatic encounters like that until you have it in writing. It's not really a commitment. So... At least that's that's the U.S. U.S. stance. Your your level of worry that after the Beijing Olympics something will happen, either minor or major, is it increasing or holding steady right now? Oh uh, yes, absolutely increasing. Um, it's been on that trajectory for a while now. I think, like you just said, after the Olympics is really the date to watch. That's also when the uh, Russian uh, Belarusian exercise is supposed to wrap up. Um, so that's definitely a time to watch. John Hardy with FDD will be talking. Thank you. Thank you.